Hey everyone, Dr. Frunky here with a new discussion video for you. Today I wanted to talk about these four knives. It just so happens that as I'm sitting here, I have four front flipper knives that are available to me, and I wanted to discuss the phenomenon of the front flipper, where it's coming from and why, and I wanted to gauge an opinion of the community to see if you guys are liking this new trend and uh, if you'd like to see it continue to keep going. And I wanted to give sort of my thoughts on the whole situation, uh, what's good and what's bad, and, and what I like about front flippers. Now I'm just gonna go out there and say, I do like front flippers. I don't think that I prefer them to regular flippers, and I don't think that I prefer them to the thumb stud or traditional opening or spider hole opening. But it is an interesting thing that I think will continue to develop, and some makers are doing it perfectly, and some makers are just doing it completely wrong. And we'll sort of get into those details as to why. Uh, and some of these guys are floating somewhere in the middle. And I'll, I'll show you each of these and sort of what their action is like and talk to you about what I like. So I've actually got these arranged in order of price point here. So we've got a, a full production all the way up to a full custom knife going on right here. And so I wanted to see what the differences were and how these guys are approaching them. So let's go ahead and start out with the cheapest one. At $135, we've got the Kaiser Feist. So this is made by Kaiser, full production, Chinese-made knife, uh, and it is a an elegant, elegant design right here. I'll have a, a full video on this one on my channel at some point as well. This is the Lundquist design. So very elegant. Uh, the, the flipper tab, what it allows, what the front flipper does, it's the same for all of these, but particularly on this knife, is it allows for very clean lines. It gets rid of the, the Shabazz uh, named pocket pecker uh, and it, it doesn't break up the lines. In fact, it sort of adds to the lines of the knife in a lot of, uh, a lot of ways. Now, uh, some of the things that, uh, that Kaiser is doing right with their flipper is that they've got a good amount of jimping on the front. Uh, but the problem that I have is that the detent is a little bit too hard. And so it takes a little bit of effort to get that blade out of there. And if you, this took me a couple of weeks to actually perfect. Normally I can get something in a matter of seconds, but it actually took me quite a while to get that right. And I actually had to take this apart and put it back together to make sure that it was as smooth as it is. And it's really not all that well executed. So I think that uh, Kaiser has a little ways to go in terms of perfecting their front flipper action. It's also quite stiff. Uh, the lock bar is not perfect on this one, and there are a number of complaints that I'm going to have on this one, but uh, it's okay. Uh, but that's the entry level, so if you want the absolute cheapest, you can go with this one. Now, one level up, I just picked this one up. Uh, I had the unboxing on the channel. This is the Booze Blades Smoke. This one is actually manufactured by Wee Knives, but it's designed and engineered by an American maker, William Booze, and this one is actually quite nice. The detent is a little bit softer, uh, and it allows that blade to really flip out of there quite nicely. Uh, and what you just saw there is another aspect of the front flipper that is very intriguing, and that is the multitude of ways with which you can open a front flipping knife. Now, uh, only two of these knives, this is Smoke and the Busker over here, have these little holes that allow for multiple opening techniques, and I do like that. I think that that is something that all front flippers should start to have is some sort of secondary deployment method because if you are not skilled at doing that, which a lot of people are not going to be right off the bat, uh, it allows for a different way to open the knife for some uh, people that are maybe not knife people, someone that just picks the knife up and needs to use it. But what this this knife does is the, uh, the detent is a little bit softer, allows the knife to be very easily manipulated, and it makes it easier to actually do these other secondary opening techniques. So this one has a strong detent. This one has sort of a medium detent. Now, moving up, now we're getting into full custom knives. Uh, this is the Gareth Bull Shamwari. This one easily has the lightest detent of all of them, but it allows for the absolute smoothest of all of the actions. This is the fastest one on the table. Uh, I'm able to really open this knife up in a multitude of different ways very, very easily. Uh, it will, you know, come out if I am super aggressive and I shove that thing out. So the detent is light enough that some people might be worried about it. But I think that a medium light detent is actually necessary on a front flipper. And I would like to see that on more knives. This is the absolute smoothest knife that I think I've ever experienced in all respects. It just falls shut 
under its own weight. And this blade is not loose. There is no blade play to this. I can show you, even if I disengage the lock, there is no side-to-side -side blade play whatsoever. Rock solid and absolutely crazy smooth. So smoothness is also another function that a front flipper needs to have. Because of the funky mechanism, uh, you really want that blade to open and you don't want there to be any sort of friction. And I say that because this is the one downfall of all front flippers. The opening mechanism requires that you have this moment. And I described this to a friend of mine. There's a moment of quantum physics that takes place when you're opening a front flipper. And everyone is aware of this moment. It's the moment when you've opened the knife, when you're about right here, where you don't have a very good grip on the knife. And I call it quantum mechanics because that knife could be anywhere at any point. It could be in your hand, it could be on the ground, it could be flying out of your hands. You really don't know because you really have a moment of absolute lack of control of the knife. And if you're really not skilled at doing this all day, it's very easy to fly out of the hand. I cannot tell you how many times I dropped this knife in trying to learn how to do that mechanism. Now, I've gotten better. You know, even this knife, I just got this a couple of days ago, and I still have dropped it because it's still a little bit awkward for me. This one fills the hand a little bit better because it's a bit of a thicker handle and the clip is designed in such a way that you have a nice grip on it. That's gonna be another thing that makers need to be aware of. The clip is now going to function as a structural support for opening the knife. Gareth Bull understands that quite well, and uh, this clip functions beautifully. That was a problem with the Kaiser clip. It's too small that it doesn't really provide a whole lot of that grip, and uh, it makes it a little bit harder to open. The Boo Smoke is a little bit of a bigger clip, and you do rest your fingers on it while you're opening, so that one actually works quite well. Now moving to the last knife in the lineup here, this is the Olamic Busker. This one is very versatile. It has a lot of different opening methods. They talk about how this knife can be opened in 10 plus different ways, and it's absolutely true. Uh, this knife can be spider flicked, it can be thumb flicked, it can be traditional thumb opened, it can be spider dropped. Uh, but the problem that I have with this particular knife is that the D10 is again a little bit too strong on this knife, and it actually prevents me from doing some of the methods that I actually really like. Uh, like this one, I like being able to reach around the front of the knife and deploying it like that, but the D10 is so strong on this that I have a little bit of trouble doing I actually have a lot of trouble. I'm not able to do it. Now, the front flipping, the thumb deployment is actually perfect on this one. It's very snappy. It's, it's much smoother than the Feist, and so it actually opens a lot more reliably and everything. But it is an interesting balance that one has to strike. It's not like the regular uh, index finger flippers that we have out there. So on these guys, all you have to do is just push really hard on that, and even if it's got a weak detent, even if it's not particularly smooth, the blade is gonna come out, and it's gonna fly out, and you're gonna be able to figure out a way to do it, and you're not gonna have to do a whole lot of finger acrobatics to make that happen. Bring out a couple more regular flippers just for a comparison here. So if you figure out how, to, how hard to push it and preload it, that thing is going to fly out. It's not all that complicated. This is definitely more of a knife guy kind of a thing. Uh, it's definitely more of a unique kind of a thing, and you've got to know how to use the knife. You've got to know how to handle it, know how to open it. But not only that, the manufacturers need to understand the intricacies of producing a front flipper knife. It's a very important combination of smoothness, of ergonomics and the way that you can hold on to the handle for that quantum mechanics moment. And then you've got the uh, the smoothness that's gonna be super, super important and the detent. So when you get all of those things just right, you make a perfect front flipper. And I think that this Gareth Bull Shamwari is just about the perfect front flipper right here. And I would say all oh, the booze blade smoke and the busker come in a very, very close second. These guys are really, really well done. I think that the D10 on the busker may be a hint too strong maybe, but uh, perhaps that's just this model. It may vary slightly, but actually it's a very, very nicely done knife. Uh, I'm gonna have the video up on this one uh, 
probably already published by the time you see this. So what do you guys think of front flippers? Are you a fan of front flippers? Do you want to see more? What kind of things do you think about when you have a front flipper? What are the concerns that you have? I want to have an open discussion because I see more and more of these knives coming out soon, and uh, I think that this is a fad that's going to be here to stay. So write your comments down below. Let's talk about it. Let's make the front flipper better. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, take care.